Hello and welcome. My name is Jonathan Reeves from Jonathan Reeves Architecture. I'm a professional Vectorworks trainer and architect, and today I'd like to share with you the benefits of creating your own bespoke symbol libraries using Vectorworks from SketchUp and other forms of software. But first, I'd like to talk a little bit about myself, just to introduce myself and what I do. So my background is architecture. <clears throat> my practice is JR Architecture Limited, and I've been a practice seeing architect in the UK with my own practice since 2000. Uh, I'm also an author and recently wrote the Innovative Vectorworks BIM book, hence the title of the talk. And it's a really nice book. It's been well received. Um, it's been sort of bought or downloaded over a thousand times. And there's some really great hints and tips available. So if any of you would like to get a copy of that, please do a search on my website and you can download a copy. Um, and certainly have a look at the hints and tips. It will really help you in your use of Vectorworks. So here we see one of the pages from the hints and tips page. It's nicely illustrated and um, I think you'll find it very valuable. Okay, so I've basically also been working as a professional Vectorworks teacher and trainer for the last 17 years, as well as a Vectorworks BIM consultant. And finally, I'm actually an authorised partner and reseller for Vectorworks UK. So I'm really proud to be part of that, that team. So let's get back to the training itself. Okay, so the very first step in creating some really nice bespoke libraries is to go and do some searching on the internet. So I'm going to start off with the amazing 3D warehouse um, where there's a huge collection of SketchUp objects and you can see I'm going to download some wall art. Um, when I download, I typically choose the SketchUp 2017 or possibly 2018 file format if, if I can. I find that this works really well into Vectorworks. Um, I don't think Vectorworks yet supports the 2019 SketchUp. You can see I'm also downloading um, a few elements of things like walls and things. And here's some folders where I've created some artwork um, and you can see I'm just doing a quick preview to go through those now. So I'm going to essentially drag and drop a bunch of those into Vectorworks. Now you see there's a few options and I just want to make sure you tick create renderworks textures for the materials and just hold on, hold on for a moment while those materials import. Because I dragged and drop um, a number of those in one go you'll see that I just get the dialogue popping up a few different times and I just need to click OK each time. So it doesn't take very long and essentially you can see these symbols are going to come in. Let's have a look at the uh, scale. We'll just reduce that a little bit. And the other thing you will note is they often come through on different layers. So I'm just going to separate these out a tiny bit. And let's put these in a bit of a line. Um, nice little command. Yep, there's one there that I just need to rotate around to the other axis. Let's align them all. So I'm going to line them all to the bottom just so they're all lined up. And I'm just going to move them all and snap them so that they're at essentially the zero height. Now this will become important when I make these into symbols in a moment. OK, let's also align and distribute them in equal spacing, just so they're nice and evenly distributed. And we'll just space those out a little bit more. And this is a great little command in Vectorworks that allows you to actually space things out with an equal distribution. Fantastic. So you see we've got the basic artwork here. I'm just going to change the scale to 1 to 20. And you can see I'm moving between plan and the preview mode in 3D. OK, so let's have a little look at what we've got so far. You can see that very few of those um, SketchUp symbols came through. And at the moment, we need to basically turn them into symbols. So give them a decent name, something that you're going to help find, you, um, find them in the future. And I'm also going to create a class. So when I drop them in from my library, it will actually add this class to my file. Now that is really good practice when you're creating your Vectorworks libraries for the office. Um, okay, so let's just carry on. We'll rename a few of these. Don't need to do them all now. Okay, let's just do one or two more. So create symbol. Let's call that wall art. You can see we're already assigning it to the correct class as well. Okay, so have a quick preview. Um, let's just carry on finishing off these last few. And in a minute, we'll have a look at the resources manager. And this is one of the really lovely things about Vectorworks in that once we've created some good resources and symbols, we can essentially store these effectively 
um, as libraries that either we or the office can tap into. Um, it makes a fantastic way to manage resources. And what I often do is add those files as favorites, and I'll show you how this works, so that we can kind of search them, uh, find them easily, and essentially basically share them with our colleagues. Okay, so I think we're done now on the uh, creation of the symbols. I'm gonna select them all. I'm gonna change the thumbnail to right isometric. And also, really sweet, I'm going to right click and render them all. Now we could also do this with the bigger preview um, and slightly a shame that you can't just do that automatically, but you have to do that one at a time. Okay, so we just go through and I kind of makes sense in a way because you may decide that you want the custom preview to be a different view, but it would be nice to be able to select them all and do, the, do this with one click. Okay, brilliant. So you can see we're selecting OpenGL and right isometric generally for all of those. Brilliant. Okay, now if we wanted, we can just save this file, and that means later on we'll be able to add that as a favorite file. Also, I'm just going to purge the drawing to get rid of any textures or things that came through that didn't really need to be there. And you can see it's a pretty small file, it's only 5.7 megabytes. Okay, fantastic. Next little step, I'm going to click on the symbols. I'm going to double click and edit the uh, 3D heights. So I would say if you set these at zero, as I've done here, relative to the origin of the model, then what's nice is you can type in the height you would like those symbols to be. Um, let's just do one more. So if we double click on this one, you can see I'm going to pop it into front view. I'm just going to move it up by 237 and click zero. So the nice thing about doing that is when you place your pictures at a certain height above the wall, you all only need to actually add that value in the Z dialog and that picture will, the bottom of that picture will actually be at that particular height. I guess you could do this with the, um, top, of the top of the picture or the bottom. So I'm just doing it with the bottom at the moment. Okay, I'm going to select all of those and make them all down at zero. You can see, or 1800, that's really nice to be able to actually put them all up at the same heights very rapidly. So I'm just gonna extrude a, a rectangle uh, just to give myself a bit of a base to snap these objects to. And I'm just gonna move that base to the middle. And we'll just zoom in a little bit here. Let's get them all aligned at the distribution point. You can see, nice to sort of view those pictures on a bit of a background like a wall. Excellent, that's looking good. Okay, and basically, I'm just gonna apply um, some stucco texture by searching my RenderWorks libraries. Now the search dialog in VectorWorks, the resources manager, is absolutely incredible. You should really use this as much as you can. So we've got a little bit of texture on that wall now and we can spin it around and it looks really nice and realistic. Um, you can see I can easily globally select all those pictures and place them at certain heights if you want the bottoms or the tops to, uh, to run through to make it nice and neat. And let's just space them out a little bit more one more time with that wonderful align and distribute command. Fantastic. Well, I think we're done on those particular symbols and they look great. We can use them in our next project. So just to finish off, uh, I just want to show you some of the other libraries I've made recently, um, all from really SketchUp and some of them from um, TurboSquid using .3ds imports. But these are just straight from the SketchUp warehouse. Um, I needed some stone walls for a project and I found some really nice stone walls and gabions, um, some extra bits like tree bark, uh, piles of logs, and actually some really nice plants as well. Now. You've got to be a bit careful, they can take up file size, but if you make them into symbols, then Vectorist doesn't really mind because you can repeat these around as much as you need to. Um, so you can see I'm basically just doing something here called adding some tags. So I'm selecting the plants and adding tags. Now this means wherever I am in Vectorist, whatever libraries I'm looking at, all I need to do is just search um, for the name that I've given them and it will pick up the tags. Now this is a unique feature and a really welcome one. So if you do develop libraries, please add tags and share them with your colleagues. Thanks for listening.